Hi everyone, Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping an EFT, so you can eliminate self-sabotage and take the action that you want. On Monday, as this podcast goes live, the Tapping World Summit 2020 has begun. Every single day, there are two free presentations from some of the best change work professionals all over the world. Even though it started on Monday, there are still close to two weeks of free audios waiting for you to take advantage of. If you'd like to participate, it's absolutely free. All you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash TWS. That's tappingqna.com slash TWS. TWS stands for Tapping World Summit. And as a reminder, it is free to participate, but if you do end up purchasing something at the end of the summit, I will receive an affiliate commission for that. I am not sharing this because of the affiliate commission. I'm sharing it because I think it's a great, valuable resource. It's actually something I've been featured in a number of years in the past, and it's something I think you should check out. TappingQA.com slash TWS. This is Gene Montra Stilling. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 434, originally aired February 26, 2020. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. Today, we are going to talk about and do some tapping for those times that you don't feel anything. And when we don't feel anything, it falls into two categories. There's the feeling of ambivalence and there's the feeling of numbness. And so we're going to take those one at a time and I'm going to show you how easy it is to tap for those so that you can actually get more in touch with the emotions so you can be more present and you can clear what's going on. Before we do that, I want to send a big thank you out to everyone who supports the Tapping Q&A podcast. This week, I'd like to thank Bruce. Bruce is the newest supporter of the Tapping Q&A podcast. All of our supporters receive amazing bonuses, tap along audios. Some of them even get one-on-one time with me. They get access to MP3s of the videos that are put up. If you too would like to be a supporter of the Tapping Q&A podcast, all you need to do is go to tappingqa.com so you can be just like Bruce, support this work that we continue to do so more people can consume it and you can get some bonus. Tappingqa.com slash support. So today's conversation around this idea of feeling numb and feeling uninspired and not being able to feel anything came from a number of sources. It came up in a number of email questions I received from listeners just like you, as well as being a conversation with two of my clients over the course of the last couple of weeks. And again, when these things come up over and over again, it means there's something in the air and it'd be a good idea for us to approach this stuff. One of the reasons why when we're thinking about taking action why it is useful for us to do this is when it comes to numbness, when we feel numb, we are not in a circumstance where we can clear things that we are carrying around because we can't tune into them. And even though they might not be impacting us in this moment, those beliefs, those feelings, those past things that we are carrying around very easily can be impacting what we are doing moment to moment as we navigate the day. And so by being in a situation where we are able to clear that sense of numbness, it's going to give us space to do tapping, to move forward so that it's easier for us to take action. The second feeling of just kind of being ambivalent and uninspired, like that becomes a really clear place where we can see the impact it's going to have on the actions that we are taking. I had a Sunday afternoon after a very, very long week and a very, very full Saturday where I just wasn't in the mood for anything at all. So much so that even when it came time for me to just sit in front of the television and not do anything for about 90 minutes, I couldn't even be inspired to find something to pick and choose and ended up just kind of wandering down to the river and sitting on the bench and watching the boats flow by. And that was good enough. But that sense of ambivalence and that sense of uninspired makes it difficult for us to do anything at all because since there is no inspiration we're acting purely on willpower and on a Tuesday morning when I sit down at my desk and I'm feeling good because I worked out in the morning and I'm ready to go even if there isn't a sense of inspiration I'm in a resource state where taking action is something I can do I can take my willpower I can say this is what needs to get done and I need to go for it 
But if I don't have any sense of inspiration and I'm just feeling ambivalent about what's going on, it's really easy to float from task to task, disconnected and uninspired. So let's take these one at a time. Numb is really interesting. I had a conversation years ago with a friend of mine and one of those late night conversations that you have about the world, the universe, and everything, where you're just trying to figure things out. And it's the middle of the night, and you're talking with friends, so it's safe to say things out loud that might not be safe otherwise. And my friend, who we will call Heather, was talking about how she didn't have to worry about drinking too much when she was in a bad place, because her in a bad place was being numb. And so drinking alcohol to numb a feeling wasn't necessary, Because there was nothing there to feel. Therefore, there was nothing there to numb. And in many cases, or at least in the time that I've been navigating my own emotional experience and working with my clients, numbness shows up as a way of keeping us safe. And in this case, the keeping us safe is it doesn't want to experience the pain that is possibly there or. It is afraid that if it starts to feel the emotion, the emotion is going to become too much and overwhelm us. I actually have talked to a number of clients who've had this experience when I ask them about tapping on their own, and they're really hesitant to tap on their own because they are afraid if they tap on their own, they're going to go from not feeling very much to feeling a lot. And this fire hose of information is going to be so overwhelming that it is going to be impossible for them to manage it on their own. And instead of doing some tapping to feel better, they're actually going to uncork stuff and make it a whole lot worse for them in the moment and possibly wreck the rest of their day because they've thrown themselves into a funk. And so with this lens, we can recognize that when we are feeling numb, we can take all of those concerns and tap for them to create some space to feel some emotions. So I'm going to demonstrate this right now. If you'd like to tap along with me, it's really, really super simple. Tap on the side of your hand, take a nice big deep breath. And just move from tapping point to tapping point, repeating after me. I recognize the fact that I'm feeling numb right now. I know that there is something going on in my experience that I need to feel. I know it would be healthy for me to feel my emotions. But there is a part of me that is afraid that if I feel my emotions, it's going to be too much. It is afraid that it is going to be painful. It is afraid that it is going to be overwhelming. If I feel these emotions, it is worried that I will become so consumed by them that it is going to wreck this moment. It is going to take over my day. It will be like breaking the dam of emotions. Once that dam is broken, it will come rushing in and consume everything all at once. And I appreciate that it's trying to keep me safe in this way. I don't want to be overwhelmed by my emotions. I don't want to be all consumed by my emotions. I recognize the fact it is possible for me to feel some of my emotions right now. Not to feel all of them. Not to be overwhelmed by them. But to be in touch with a small bit of them. By being in touch with this small amount, 
I will be able to clear that small amount. Creating the space to feel a little more. Creating space to be in a circumstance where I can heal and transform without being overrun by it all. I give myself permission to know it is safe for me to feel emotion. I give myself permission to do that right now. So I can be more present to this moment. Allowing healing and transformation. Nice big deep breath. And so you can see how straightforward that is. We're basically just naming the fears, acknowledging those fears, and stating what we also know to be true. So the second piece of this, when we are ambivalent or feeling uninspired, part of it can be coming from the exact same spot. That there is a part of us, possibly, that is afraid of feeling inspiration. And the reason that it is afraid to feel inspiration is that... If I feel inspired, I'm going to take action. And if I take action, I'm taking risk. And if I'm taking risk, I'm putting myself out there, which means I might fail. And so being in this situation of feeling inspiration, there's a part of us that's afraid it's going to be set up to fail and have to deal with the consequence of that failure. The second piece of responding to this is sometimes we just don't have the energy because of other things going on in our life and being anything but ambivalent, being inspired takes energy. And I was, I was having a conversation over the weekend with a friend of mine and we were talking about speaking in public and she does it from time to time. She does it more than most, but she is not like me where I'm doing it, you know, hundreds of times of years, sometimes more than that every single year for the last 25 years. And she was asking me about what sort of kind of energy hygiene and energy management I did to speak as I was dealing with an audience and their energy. And because of the way that I deal with other people's emotions, I'm less on the empathic scale than she is. And because of all my experience in speaking, I've come to realize that when it comes time for me to have the energy of speaking, the only thing I have to worry about is if I'm off. The sense of ambivalence that we're talking about, the sense of not having a lot of energy. And so for me in that case, it's not an issue of that I'm afraid to have energy because things are going to go wrong. I just don't have the energy. And so what I do in that case is for the first five or six minutes I'm on stage giving a presentation, I just act as if. It's almost like the show that I'm putting on isn't just the stuff that I'm presenting, but I'm also pretending to be someone who has a great deal of energy. And what's interesting about that is that if we give ourselves the opportunity to state how we want to be and why we want to be that while we're tapping, oftentimes we break off some of the barriers to being able to actually have that energy and to tune into that. So now we're going to tap for the feeling of ambivalence or just kind of not feeling inspired. Tap on the side of the hand, nice big deep breath. And just move from tapping point to tapping point. I recognize the fact that I just don't have a lot of energy. I don't have a lot of motivation. And I don't have a lot of inspiration. And when I feel ambivalent like this, it's hard to take action. Because there's no motivating factor. And I'm having to act on willpower and willpower alone. And from time to time, that is okay. But that is no way to live. That is not sustainable. It might work for a few minutes. But it's not enough for the long term. It is possible that there is a part of me that is afraid to have motivation. 
Because if I have motivation, I'm going to try. If I try, I might fail. If I fail, it is going to be painful. Having no motivation is a great way of avoiding failure. Because when I'm not motivated, I'm not taking action. When I'm not taking action, I can be safe. Because there is no possibility of failure. I give myself permission to know it is okay to feel motivation. That it is safe to take action. I also give myself permission to pretend that I know what I want to do. I give myself permission to put on the costume of a motivated person. I know what it's like to feel inspiration. And if I pretend that I have inspiration, I'm going to connect with my inspiration. If I pretend to have energy, I will connect with that energy. In big and small ways, it is appropriate for me to feel. In big and small ways, it's appropriate for me to have emotion. In big and small ways, it is safe for me to feel. Every moment that it feels safe as I am feeling, will make it easier for me to feel in the next moment. I give myself permission to feel. Nice big deep breath. The one thing that I would add to this, which I can't add right now because I don't know what the thing is that you want to do, is I would also add as I'm tapping what I want to feel and why I want to feel it. I want to feel motivated this morning as I sit down to work because I want to have the opportunity to connect with clients who I can truly serve. I want to have the motivation to follow up with all of those great connections so I have the opportunity to work with them in the future. And so by stating what we want and why we want it, and we talked about this recently when we were talking about goals, we put ourselves into a position that makes it super easy for us to move forward in such a way that we are able to start connecting with that energy and that moment, emotion to start creating that transformation. To give both of those tap-alongs a try, as always, we've included scripts of those tap-alongs on the website. If you go to tappingqa.com slash 434 for this episode, you will find a link to a PDF that you can download with these scripts. You can take them with you. If you have the Tapping Q&A app, you should be able to find the script inside of the app in the text section, T-E-X-T. If you know someone in your life who could use an audio like this, please be our ambassador, pass it along, don't spam your inbox, but every person that you share this with, who is a little more in touch with what they're feeling, the healthier they're going to be, the better the world is going to be for all of us. Yes, I know how cheesy that sounds, but I really believe it, that when the people around us are healthier, it makes it better for all of us. If you have not done so already, I would encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. Remember, in podcasting parlance, subscribe is absolutely free. It's not like Netflix or Disney Plus or anything else. It is free. And in some ecosystems, they don't call it subscribe. They call it follow like they do in Spotify. So wherever you find your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Luminary, Anywhere you find audio, you can find the Tapping Q&A podcast and just click on that subscribe, that follow, that like button so you get all of the new episodes every single time they come out. Questions or comments, I always love hearing them. I can be reached to Gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com. Or if you're on the website right now, just click on that contact link. You can leave me a voice message or an email from inside of the Tapping Q&A app. Just click on the contact button. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, you can find it in the iOS app store as well as the Google app store. Just search Tapping Q&A. It's absolutely free. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.
The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Monterostelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Monterostelli and Tapping Q&A.